Canon 15 to 35 lens. Had a chance to try it out. What do I think of it? What did I think of it? Did I enjoy it? Well, that's coming up. I'll let you know right now. Again, we were down at the Canon test drive event where they let us try a whole bunch of lenses. And one of the lenses that was high on my list to try was the RF Canon 15 to 35 2.8. And we've seen a lot of people online reviewing this video. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna add one to the mix because here, here's my thoughts. So let's look at some photos that I took. Now I took these all with a Canon RP with the 15 to 35. And let's bring up a shot here. So I'll bring up my information panel just so you guys can see it. You can make sure you know that I'm not full of crap when I'm telling you this is what it is. So Canon ESRP, 15 to 35. This shot here shot at 28 millimeters. And you know, really, it's, it's a lovely lens. It really is. Now I'm shooting in a super flat profile right now. Like it has no sharpening, no anything. It's designed so that I can try to color correct. But if you zoom in here, for instance, really, if you look at this, it is got beautiful edge detail as far as I see. Um, no like chromatic abrasion really happening, no fringing, you know, it's really nice. And if you look out here on the edges, you know, we're starting to get a little bit more, but that's also because our depth of field is so tight that, you know, this is coming out of that, that range. So, you know, I think, I think that's a lovely photo and that, that lens is doing very well. Looking at, you know, some possibility of portrait, not that you would normally use, you know, a 15 to 35 as a portrait lens, but I'm, I, I'm actually shooting this one here uh, at full 35. So I'm as tight as I can get, you know, 1 80th of a second. I'm shooting it indoors, but look, look at the, the eye sharpness. Like it locked on like it did. And again, it's not crisp sharp right here, but that's, but you have to realize I haven't gone through any post-production on this. There's no color grading, no sharpening, no nothing done on it. So I, it, it will to trust you. That's good. Even beard detail. Look at that, like that hair detail in there. That's fantastic. Again, no chromatic abrasion. We got a nice, nice smooth bokeh happening back there, which, which looks lovely. I think that's again, fantastic. I want you to see kind of the difference between what that full wide versus what it's not full wide. It's still wide. So when you shoot this at 35, this is kind of the shot you're getting. It's, it doesn't have a lot of, you know, not, it, that's definitely correctable in, in regards to perspective without question, not, not an issue. Uh, this probably a little harder, you know, it, it's a wide shot. And when you're close to anything, just be aware, you're going to get that, that building skew. Now we can use some perspective corrections to kind of bend that back out again, because I'm so close to those vertical lines. You really start to see that in the in the 15 for sure. But again, clarity of the shot is really good. Colors are great. You know, there's no, there's no, it's a good, it's a good lens. I don't know what else to tell you. This is not going to, these aren't like scientific. Let's get into pixel. This is, do I think I would buy this lens? You know what? And if I had right now $33,000 Canadian, it's definitely on the list without question. So I just want to see you guys that difference between that 35 right here to 15. Right, that's, that's all right. Now let's look at some detail shots. So if we bring up something like this, you know, I'll move this on the other side here. You can really see the detail that this is coming up. Like when it hits focus, it is lovely. Like it's got a nice focus on it. And at this point in time, it's, it's anything that doesn't look even a bit sharp is just because it started off as a fairly wide, oops, it started off as a fairly wide shot. And by the time we get into that, the pixels are starting to lose their forgiveness is what's happening. But yeah, that's super nice. And that bokeh is lovely inside there. That's, that's all right. I like that a lot. Uh, last but not least, we get an outdoor, a little bit of sharpness. And again, take a, take a nice tight shot in there. That looks, that looks lovely. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. Come on now. 15 to 35, 2, 8. That's, that's beautiful. Such a nice, such a nice little lens. Primary reason that I would get this lens though is the fact that it's a 2815 with IS and that would be fantastic for video. So let's let's take a look at some of the video that I shot. So I'm just gonna let this kind of roll for you guys. Now be aware, this has been color graded, but it has not had any 
post stabilization done to it. So I'm letting it run just with the IS from the lens. So here you go. All right, so we got the 15 to 35 lens on here. So we're giving this a try right now. I'm not wearing the mic or have a mic, so you're getting camera sound. But nice and wide. So there's our full wide, there's our full zoom. You can see the detail in both and nice and stable. That's super nice. Super nice. Okay, so we also got it outside here just to see how it does outdoors. I think it does actually very well for video. Again, there's full wide versus full zoom, even at full zoom. I can almost get it out far enough. Almost. Yeah, that's not too bad. Not too bad. All right, so simple, simple question. Would I spend $3,000 Canadian, so between two and 2,500 US, on this lens and the simple answer is you know if i had the money and if i was in a scenario that i could get the money back for like business expenses then yeah i think it's it's like it's a really really nice lens like here's a photo just so you guys can get a more of a traditional use of this lens i would think you know with those of us that are like oh i'm just going on holidays and i got a lot of money i guess and um here's like your wide shot versus you know, so this is your 35 and that's your 15. You can kind of see that variation of how big it is. But even in here, like if you zoom in, right? Once it, wherever it hits focus on there, like it's a nice lens. But this is where I always, I, I throw that question out because this is a very particular lens. It's a very specific lens. Because if you look at someone who's not shooting an RF style camera so an r and you're shooting like a crop camera so you're shooting a, a, I don't know one of the 80ds or 70s or you're shooting a rebel line or whatever it is you know you can get or even an m series like my m50 because i can get an adapter you can get something like a a, a 10 to 18. now that's like a 400 dollars lens and when you do that 1.6 crop on it it literally comes out to like a 16 to 35 40 somewhere in that range so focal distance it is this lens but it's like an f4 4.5 to 5.6 or something like that so you lose a bit of speed but is it something that you really are going to notice i don't know you know if you were just a holiday person going out shooting holiday photos and you're like i just want a wide lens so i can shoot some some architecture i've been using i have the 10 to 18 and that is my workhorse i use it for vlogging i use it for anything that i need with 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 and it it does its job it's it's i love it it's plastic mounted it's not a strong weatherproof lens it's got flaws in that but if something were to happen to it if i were to, it were to get a scratch if it were to get stolen the quality of the photos are fine you know it's in a lot of aspects i think i would still just buy that lens but if you're a professional then you're going to appreciate this lens and you're going to appreciate it a lot if you have the money then you're going to love this 15 to 35. it is a fantastic lens really it is but that's just some things to be aware of right not all of us have this money coming out of our pockets and not all of us even have or will even see the difference. Like if I showed, and I'll, and I'll guarantee it, if I showed this photo to, let's say, a bunch of my friends or even my own wife, she would probably be like, it looks the same as your 10 to 18. You know, and, that, and that's something you have to be aware of. Is it is it as, is the 10 to 18 as sharp? No. Is it as fast? No. Uh, is it as good as this lens? No. But are you and the people watching your stuff going to see the difference. In some aspects, the simple answer is yeah, for sure they are.
and other ones they aren't. So I'll leave that up to you. Hopefully this helped you. It, it maybe it didn't. I don't. I don't know. So it's not scientific. We're not pixel peeping. It really is for those of us that are like. I just wanted a nice lens because I want some wide shots. Do you need to invest this money? Is it wise? I don't know. That's up to you. I leave it there. I'm going to put links to the 15 to 35 that I can find. And I'm also going to put some to the 10 to 18 because that's the lens that I like and I use it. Uh, now, again, I can't use it on my full frame. So that just takes it like right out of the mix. I can't. So I have to, I have to ponder. Ponder with my thoughts what I want. Right? Yeah. All right, guys. Links down below. Uh, like, comment, share, subscribe. I'm going to leave you there. Uh, one more lens video coming up soon, right away, on a lens that I didn't expect to try and didn't really expect that I'd like as much as I did. All right, guys. We'll see you then.